Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. So we've got Parmentia, yeah, we've got Mr. Roach. Uh, do go ahead and check out Commissar Roach's channel, Commissar Roach's channel on YouTube. Uh, by the way, guys, very highly recommended. Uh, I remember the match that we had some time ago there, Roach, where we played... Uh, <laughs> what was it? The Soviets and the Hungarians in... Uh, oh, was it Steel, Steel Division? That was fun. That was fun. Indeed, you have a new name. You are known as the Parmentia. <laughs> How you doing there, Plumber? Good to have you, my friend. General Kenobi, indeed. Uh, so, I apologize for not having any uh, prior warning, but I would be streaming. Uh, I've been out a little bit... Uh, well, I've been out most of the day, to be fair. But I did actually have some books come through. Uh, I'm quite happy now. I had ordered these Osprey books. These Osprey... Ooh, what are they? Battle Order uh, books a while ago. So I ordered American Armor Divisions 1944-45. And then I got the Panzer Divisions of 39 to 40, 41 to 43, and 44 to 45. Except the Panzer Divisions uh, for 1939 and 40, and then the 45 and 40 arrived months ago. And the ones, uh, the, the American one and the, uh, the 41 to 43, uh, were meant to arrive in June. So I'm like, okay, okay, I'm getting a little bit tired of wait to now. Uh, so I cancelled the order and got a refund. And then they arrived today. So I got the refund yesterday and they arrived today. I'm like... Banging. Amazing. Uh, whatever happened to that game? Yeah, yeah, this is it. It was okay, but uh, I don't know. I think it just left you, like, hankering for something else, really. But nonetheless, we'll get into this here. <laughs> oh, yeah. I still remember that. <laughs> uh, you won that game. I think because I just ran out of ammunition. <laughs> I just ran out of ammunition. I just ran out of the units. <laughs> Uh, you ground me down there. I had been recently watching YouTube. I can't wait for the next stream. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm gonna have to put like some sort of message to make sure people are aware uh, there. I was preparing for Battle Group Gamer stream. Oh, right, that is true, actually. I hope I'm not in, uh, interfering on this time slot there. Hey, Doom there, Doomzilla. Good to have you, my friend. Nice to see these new names here. So, last time. Last time, last time. I've noticed that for some reason I'm not seeing the actual chat appear on the Twitch side of the uh, streams here. But it does on YouTube. I will have to investigate that. Make sure that works. Uh, but anyhow, last time we did order the Attack and Palin Bank. There wasn't tremendous amounts that we had ordered. We're more or less getting things moving. Uh, we do have the MKB moving towards uh, Java, really, towards Bella Papa, so we can actually ensure the capture that. The people love me. <laughs> Intriguing. I'm not new sheesh. I don't know. Everybody's got a new name. I'm gonna have to like learn people's names. Investigate with that voice. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you work? I'm too lazy to find out why you don't work. I don't know. To be fair, I'm not. It's not so much that I'm lazy. It's just I don't know how you do these things. I'm really uh, quite inept when it comes to like Twitch <laughs> and when it comes to things like this in general. Hey, Dylan Vulcan, good to have you, my friend. Okay. So moving into the 15th of March. Hey, didn't that Alex? Good to have you, my friend. Oh, that's a shame. But it's good to have you, my friend. Good to have you. I know it's old, but it's got about a halfway through your Civil War. Ah, oh, yeah, pl Civil War 2 really is fantastic. It really is fantastic. I'm always going to recommend it due to the fact that it being buttery smooth. Right, so we see the shark over here, then. Right, okay. And again, okay, actually, no. They may not be in the Universe there. But we do have our forces actually uh, exiting Palembang, which is good news. I mean, we had things go right this time, so we didn't have to linger. So that's quite good there. So the shark doesn't get a hit on the Oata Maru. Arai Maru. Oh, sorry, Ural Maru. Is that Ural or UI? Ural. Oh, oh sorry, Ural Maru. I'm thinking that doesn't work. There's no L in Japanese, as far as I'm aware. So, yes, Ural. So obviously that's a foreign one there. We do see a few forces down here, actually. That's intriguing. I do wonder what he actually has south of Port Moresby. I mean, frankly, um, I will be intrigued. We do have naval search in that area. I do wonder if it was the... Uh, I wonder what was running the night naval search. It might have been the actual... Hmm. R and L merged? I kind of merged? What does that mean? Is that the audio, or...? Hmm. 
Oh, right. Oh, yes, on, uh, on uh, the uh, Ural. Okay, Ural. <laughs> I was a bit worried if there was the uh, audio pick. Oh, no. Right and left audio. Oh, God, what's gone wrong? But no, everything's okay. That's fine. That's fine. Never mind. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I imagine that the actual naval search came from the uh, bombardment group. They had night naval search. Ooh. Okay, Aiden. I mean, that could very well be his carrier force over there, which is going to be really uh, intriguing. Or is it the carrier group? Maybe. We'd have to take a look at these names, actually. Alden and Edsel. Edsel. Hmm. Edsel. Edsel. There we go. We do have the H6K4s that are well and truly within range there, so either we do pick up on some additional information. It would be intriguing to see if it was the carriers. I don't know if it is the carriers. Would the carriers be there? It seems a little bit early. It seems quite quick for them to move there. Maybe. Yeah, play by email would be really quite good there. Yeah. <laughs> right. Once again, bombing sort of fire. Well, to be honest, these carriers are coming towards us. At least as far as we can gather. I don't think they'd be at Brisbane by now, but maybe they could be at Brisbane. It just seems a little bit quick for them to be at Brisbane. But then again, no, I, no, I don't think it. I don't think it is them in Brisbane. I mean, I'd be somewhat shocked if it was. It might have been, but he didn't have all the carriers actually concentrate. But then again, it has been a few days, so maybe we've just lost track. So we are bombing Singapore here, so we do have the 22 Sallies over there. We do have the key, uh, as the key 30s over here as well, which is nice. Heavily escorted by the key 40s, uh, so the 40 key 40 uh, free one sees there. Right, a few hits on the runway. That's fine. We do have more bombers coming in now. A few more hits. More bombers. Yeah, maybe a couple of turns. It feels a little bit too quick for it to be a carrier force. So we do have 30 lights and ice coming in here. We are going to move in four aircraft over here. Once we are finished with uh, Singapore, then I will have bombers I can actually free up and move elsewhere. Uh, we will... Well, then again, this is it, isn't it? Uh, Luzon's a difficult one, really. I don't have the forces to take him at Bataan. Uh, we can eventually starve him, but we do need to clear all the naval assets around here and, and prevent him from actually bringing anything in. But we'll see about that. It feels good to restart the bombing campaign there, not that nice. I might as well fold them just into the escort because they're just not arriving in time to be able to make a difference. Okay. Now, ideally, we do get to actually attack the unit that. War yeah, just this one here, the one that was just south of uh, Nanyang. Ideally, we do actually get to attack that. I doubt it. If they're moving, they may leave this turn. As we're moving into the PM phase. Okay, turbulence into the water. We are still seeing the ships off the coast of what looked to be Brisbane. I don't think it was actually Brisbane, but it didn't look too far away. Hey, didn't they, Dog? And uh, we just managed the PM air phase here, so not too far in. Right, we did have Dina shot down by Cap, which is not too fun. We still see ships around Rangoon, which is not too surprising. Tremendous amount of air active events, we're moving quite quickly into the land phase. Then we do have some unloading, I believe, elsewhere. Yep, there we go, Ketapang. Excellent. There we go, moving into the land phase proper. Right, I was going to say, I wonder if we'll begin with Singapore or Palembang. Uh, the bombardment has been fairly effective in Singapore. We do, of course, have the 38th Division. Uh, we are resting the divisions here. Uh, obviously, we're bombarding with the artillery that we do have in Singapore. We do actually have quite the uh, conglomerate of artillery. Uh, the divisions are resting. We're going to get them down in terms of fatigue and disruption, and then we'll attack for the final time, I'd imagine. Uh, his forces are somewhat beaten up. We can see that the 27th Australian Brigade there is really the only thing that's holding out at this moment in time. And the 22nd Australian Brigade, there's also the SSVF Brigade there. There's not much. He's got quite a few base forces in there, actually, which are going to contribute quite a bit in terms of, like, support, I'd imagine. 
see the second loyal battalion there. Okay. Go ahead and speed things up. Now, if he's paying attention, he will notice the actual arrival of the 38th Division there. I mean, the 38th is actually in perfect shape, which is fantastic. Okay. So we have five gone, uh, five gone here, one destroyed, four disabled, fine. So we're at 2,423 here. Good numbers. 51 casualties there, so nine disabled, one disabled, one disabled. It is having an impact. Uh, we're just going to wait and allow the disruption and fatigue to recover, and then we'll attack Singapore. So we do have our bombardment attack over here, then. So he does have two cores. I think two cores. A, a second core had to ride the turn before, was it? Or something of that nature. Well, they haven't moved yet, so I think we will get an attack over here, then. Now, the question comes down to, will he attack us over here? I've been expecting it for a while, but he hasn't yet done it. Right, so we're up at 1,200 there. We could probably attack this position here, then try to push forward. I think we do have a 4th Division on the way. Ah, so we actually do get an attack over here, but it's the 13th Chinese Corps, so it looks like it was just completely shot. Uh, so it looks like there's some, some sort of rear guard there. So we could have gone for a shock attack, actually, but I don't regret going for a deliberate attack. 285 to 1. We should annihilate it anyway. But this is what I wanted here to not destroy, but to force it to retreat there. Uh, yes, yeah, so it had 13. So we take 47 casualties. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, for another 5,625 casualties there. 204 squads destroyed. Uh, 245 non combatants destroyed. 4 engineers destroyed. 3 disabled. Uh, 56 guns are lost there. So that, that core is well and truly shattered. There's, <laughs> it's going to take some time for that core to recover there. I don't know really what he. <sighs> I don't know really what I achieved there. I mean, true, he did force us to step back a hex, but that's fine. I mean, we took relatively few casualties and inflicted quite a good number on him. He still has the AV over here, I'd imagine, because he didn't bring his entire force to bear over here at Nanyang. He delayed us somewhat, but we still have our forces here. Though we do have multiple avenues of approaching Xi'an, which we're going to exploit as much as possible. I mean, these forces over here, it would have been beautiful had we been able to march off that road, but now it's not going to happen. We do have forces that are going to be moving along the rail line to this position over here, and then they're going to be moving down this road. And then what I'd like to do is probably try and push this road if I can. I probably won't be able to push it from that position, but I might be able to push it from these positions. Hey, doing there, Grim? Uh, going well enough, going well enough. Right. We should take Palambang today. I would be surprised if we don't have Palambang, considering that we have such a dramatic advantage. Uh, but it will see. I mean, what, I'd like to say that we secure it. There's 10 AV there. I'm going to be surprised if we don't, but... <laughs> You know, sometimes those uh, those dice rolls be great, great. Ideally, we secure it with very little damage, but we'll see you there. Hundred twenty-four infantry attacking there. Yeah, I mean, the refineries, it'd be nice. It'd be nice to have everything there, but obviously we want more oil than anything. If the oil survives, then that's fine. But yeah, it would be nice. It would be nice if it was okay, but I, I don't think it's going to happen. But we'll see. Indeed. <laughs> hey, good to see that uh, Twitch is on the ball there. <laughs> that's encouraging. In fairness, I did say quite late. There we go, we have Palmbang at long last. At long last there. <laughs> it's about time. Okay. Oh, so they surrender. They retreat, okay. No flights, we take out two of these. Yep. Yeah. Far too late, but we'll be able to make it work now. So we do have a base that's immediately workable for us, which is fantastic news. Uh, transport's ready, go fuel and supply essentially. Okay, for balance, it's managed to a size for field and a field burner. Okay, so we finally have Rabal. No, we've got Rabal. Sorry, we finally have Palambang. We've got Rabal on time. Palambang's late, but we've got it now. Do we want to have any bets on how it's going to turn out? I'm ready to be disappointed, frankly. We don't talk about the dice gods in my company as I know the wrath of them. <laughs> yes, they're wrath. Oh dear. I actually did get through the post here today. I actually got my uh, copy of Spearhead, which I'm looking forward to playing, actually. It's an old game. I think it's from the 90s. Uh, Spearhead Rules and Organizations uh, for Division-level World War II Wargaming. Looking forward to playing that. When was it out? It was released in 1995. I'm the same age as this uh, Wargame. I mean, it's looking a little bit faded, so... 
That makes me feel bad. <laughs> oh, it's got a fusty smell to it, though. <laughs> That's a fusty old book. Okay, here we go. Right, let's hope, let's hope for good numbers. Hope for good numbers. Uh, that's not bad. You young kid, yeah. 7 11, that's not too bad. 189, 214 there. I can't recall what we're going to have a dad man one, but that's not too bad actually. 189, we can repair that. You're a youngin. <laughs> Don't sniff bugs, man. <laughs> to be honest, I didn't sniff it, I opened it up and the, uh, the waft overwhelmed me. Yeah, not bad then, really. Not bad at all. We can definitely deal with that. That could have been significantly worse. It could have been significantly better, but I will... I will accept that. Well, this is it, isn't it, really? What can we do? We have it at long last, so we'll make uh, good use of it. And the good news is that does really quite radically accelerate the fall of the Dutch East Indies in general. I don't think it really has much in the way of um, air power left in Java. The majority of his air power seems to be actually in Burma. And one year older in 14 days. Yeah, enjoy it, Grim. Enjoy it. Enjoy the grave, man. <laughs> and doesn't he have the production turn off in Palembang? Uh, we'll take a look at that in just a second. Oh, so we can see that he's actually looking to reinforce Palembang. Well, that's too bad. As we do see the units that f uh, fell back over here. The good news is we have uh, quite the en ensemble of forces here to make immediate use here. So if we take a look at that condition then, so we can see that the 124th Regiment has 32 fatigue, 15 disruption. And the Naval Guard units that had just arrived can immediately begin to set out here, which is quite good. And the good news is we have since learned of the actual issues of the past. So we know that we do need to march to Lahat to then march on towards Benkelen. Uh We will march immediately to East Harbin. Uh, we'll obviously have forces march to Jijampi, but obviously we're going to have forces over here. Uh, to give it air cover. But I'm going to have the key 43s actually fly into Palembang this turn, so we can actually have it covered. Oh, congratulations there, Alex. <laughs> slow, <laughs> good looking slow agent. <laughs> uh, I have dyed my hair, actually. So I'm actually, I'm, I'm like grey, I'm grey and silver at the moment, which sounds really, really like unicornish. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the production and oil then. Okay, so we can turn the refineries back on. We do have only 7853. We're, we're going to definitely need more supply over here at Palm Bank then uh, pretty soon. Uh, we'll turn that back on then. So I'm not going to have the luxury repair of the oil immediately. I'm going to need more supply over here at Palembang quite sooner. Though the requirement's only at 2542 at this moment in time, actually, so we might be able to get away with it. Uh, but it is going to cost us about... Um, well, it's going to be a thousand supply per point, so we'll, we'll stock that up a little bit. And uh, the base is taken with only six port damage there. Zero, zero, which is quite nice. Well, there we go. We finally have it. It's only taken forever, but it was well worthwhile. <laughs> 20 car. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that, Evoken. We've been repairing uh, facilities in Palembang in the Dadman game with less than 20,000. Maybe it's to just start it, and then once it starts, it continues. I'm not too sure. Uh, but we should be able to have supply on its way. I think we do have supply being loaded up. Or maybe I'm just mad. I might be confusing games, to be honest. Probably confusing games. Okay, well, we can get some supply out there. I might be imagining it. But we can get them moving. And uh, we do have the AKs around the area, so we can get them moving in there. But the good news is we do finally have it, which is excellent. So let's take a look then. So we do have the 124th Regiment. I don't know what force this would be over here, but I doubt it would be a tremendously powerful force. We do have a 124th Regiment over here, which is part of the 31st Division, which is a... Um, okay, so that's a division that's can't, and that can't be combined yet, anyway. <laughs> Sydney. <laughs> Irish. Okay. Right, so we're looking there at clear terrain over here, which is excellent. We do have a major road there, so that's looking really good then. And so what we're going to do then is march upon uh, Jijambe. I will have the regiment go forward. He wouldn't send something that was uh, without any any usage. Uh, but I'd like to march to Jijambe there and secure it. So I'm going to send the regiment there. I can then have the regiment picked up and moved elsewhere, to be honest. Uh, what we're going to do then is we do have the 16th Naval Guard over here. 31 fatigue there. Yokosuka could do with rest as well, so we're going to have them rest. 
Uh, the additional naval guard units that have arrived will be moving out. So they're going to go ahead and cross over here. Ultimately, we're going to have... Um, I think we'll probably have two naval guard units move towards Benkelin. Uh, one to Oosthaven. He might go ahead and actually try to reinforce Oosthaven or Benkelin, but we'll see about that. Uh, but we'll have our forces move out of this. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Good to have you, Optimistic. Good to have you. We'd go for Washington, but it's been done. We need to go for London. Okay, so we're going to secure Palambang. So we're going to plan for Palambang. Sorry for Benkelin. Right, there we go. So beyond that, it appears to be uh, a quiet turn. We did have some interesting information to the south, though, just off the uh, coast of Australia. Uh, so go ahead and check that out in a moment. Uh, I need to go ahead and check on the actual amount of rest and fatigue. So we're down to 32 here, 39. I think what we're going to do then is how is Singapore's airfield looking? We do have airfield damage here at Singapore, which is good news. Uh, I think what we're going to be doing then is having... Um, Yes, uh, yes, he has that one unit there, uh, which is absolutely fine. The regiment moving north will be fine. If he arrives tomorrow, that's okay. We can attack him then anyway and keep our progress, really. Um, but even if he even if he doesn't, and if he uh, attempts to retreat towards the Jambi, then we'll just run him down anyway. There's no real problem there. Uh, so what I'm going to do then is continue to wait over here at Singapore. We're going to have another, might be another two days before we do attack, actually. We're going to get this uh, fatigue down here considerably. 32, 39. The disruption's not bad, but that fatigue needs to be below. I think we'll aim for below 25-ish. Uh, 38 for... Uh, yeah. We want to have it sort of like that range there. Okay. The bombardment's having an impact, which is nice. It is chipping away to strength somewhat. We do actually have airfield damage here on Singapore, which is good, so we're going to continue that. We are seeing some shipping over here. Okay. He could have actually really caused problems with those shipping, <laughs> with those uh, PT boats if he wanted to. But I think the fact is he doesn't have the information around the area. Oh, okay, so Batavia has 25 to 7 bombers there. We can definitely deal with them fairly easily. We do see 17 bombers over here and 6 auxiliaries at uh, Surabaya. We see aircraft over here at, at TAP. I don't know how you pronounce that one. Okay. So what we can do then is we can have the key port degrees aside over here to Palapang. We we'll take a look over to this area then. We do see uh, we see two heavy cruisers supposedly and a destroyer there. Plenty of AKs. Okay. 102 fighters, 16 auxiliaries. I think what we want to do then is we might want to go ahead and take one of the actual zero squadrons and transfer it south. Having two zero squadrons is nice, but having one zero squadron would be enough to just uh, sweep and try to gain the advantage of any time. We can build the zero squadrons we can build the uh i don't know what we're at now let's see aircraft pools actually what i can do here i always forget about the aircraft replacement pools to be honest right there we go so zeros so we have four i'm oh, sorry let's see you so far in pool. Okay, so we have five in the pool. And we're producing there about four a day then, roughly. So we're not too far off. We're not too far off from the five a day. Uh, but we'll get that up there. So what we can do then is we can we can probably sweep with one division. Sorry, one, one squadron should be fine. I do think that we would uh, be better by having a squadron of zeros move to Palembang, uh, potentially. It would allow us to actually impose control over Java. But then again, no, no, no. Actually, then again, I do have the MKB, which is moving out that way. So in fairness, I could actually have these zeros actually detached from MKB and actually have them base over Benjamin or even Palembang. Or we do have places around here that we could actually use. Uh, so no, we'll make use of the uh, carrier's air power over here. That's fine. I do also have two squadrons of zeros over here. So actually, no, we do have these zeros sufficient, which is good news. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. And what we can look at doing then is let's see we do have the amount of detachment over here which has 10 of them in repair right now let's see right so we're looking about three days before all of them are ready here okay so i can't put any in the actual reserves right now we do have a little bit of airfield damage here that's going to be repaired that was due to the fact that we bloody didn't have a required garrison but we do have our forces in here at long last which is good news right Okay, you just rest here then. 
I think I do have the guards moving on. I don't know. <laughs> I do like the music. I've been using it for a fair few games, actually. Where's the Imperial Guard Battalion? Or did I move it out? May have very well moved it out. So what's the garrison requirement here? Is 10. Do I actually have some garrison? Ah, apparently this is listed as one assault value. Well, you can remain here then for the time being. Oops. Right, you remain there. What I'm going to do then is actually bring the battalion over here. Move them there. They've got 9 AV. If there's truly 1 AV there, in terms of the actual garrison, then that's fine. That would actually um, be sufficient. So we do have the RTA moving over here. See, two units over here. Now, two units is intriguing. Whether or not it's two units or not is something that remains to be seen. I would very much love to take control of this hex over here. Taking control of this hex over here would be sufficient for us to actually begin our, our ambitious program here. Um, I think the way we're going to deal with with Rangoon is I'm going to take... Well, we'll take this hex. Taking that hex is actually quite key. But I think what we would do then is move up into the north. Move north into Burma, essentially. I think as far as it goes with Rangoon, I think it's something of... It's, it's one of those of why, why attack him where he's strong. I think what we need to do to conquer Burma is take the interior of Burma to an extent. So maybe take up towards like, maybe head towards like Mandalay. Like up into this area over here. If we can secure these bases, that would be very nice. Because these are clear, clear, clear. That's Jungle Bluff, so that one would be the priority to secure there. I mean, we could potentially go that way. Road south of Chiang Mai. Yeah. Yeah, we do have the secondary road over here that we could potentially use as well. Uh, there's no actual full connection here, but it would still allow us to march over there. It'd take time, but we'd eventually be able to make it there. So that's something to bear in mind. Okay. I mean, what turn are we on now? So we're on turn 99, so it's only about five more turns until we can actually use uh, Power Troopers again. Not that I have anything planned right now, but it might be worthwhile to take a look at Burma and look to potentially use Power Troopers to secure a base there, perhaps. Uh, what we could do then is potentially fly in Japanese units. I don't think it's going to be too long before we actually do have Singapore conquered. I think with the additional division arriving, I think we should be in a position to overwhelm him. Yeah, not too far out. We'll allow them another day's rest. Possibly another two days of rest there. I think bring bring the uh, fatigue and disruption down. The lower it is, the better they'll fight. The more men that will actually survive, the more damage will inflict on the enemy as well. As we might not take it in a single battle, but I want to have those forces as ready to go as possible. And we've waited this long, we might as well do it properly. But yeah, as soon as Singapore's taken, we'll have those forces move to Burma, essentially. Uh, we do have the MKB that is going to be in the area. Let's go ahead and take a look over here then. So we do see something here. 2 DDs, okay. Supposedly. I was going to say, it seems a little bit too quick for the carriers there. The carriers are probably, I don't know, they might be in this area here somewhere. In the Great Australian uh, Bank there. Possibly. I haven't seen any detection over my submarines here for a little while. So we don't really have a idea of where he is now. Um, but I've got to assume that he's in this area here. He's got to be in that sort of area. We do have submarines over here, so we will be made aware. Now, we are seeing task forces spotted over here, which is intriguing. We might have an operations report, which actually says, oh, they were sighted by X aircraft type, perhaps, or even X aircraft um, with proper designation. But we'll see. But frankly, if he's bringing the cows around to the Coral Sea, then that's fine. That's fine. What we'll have to do then is uh, evaluate what we actually have here in the uh, Solomon Sea and get anything that's vulnerable back. Something he might look towards doing is moving on towards truck, but I don't think he'd be that brave. It's not like he has really the option, because we still have a carrier group out here in the Pacific. Oh, he's got some radio intelligence over there, which is intriguing. Uh, what can you do in Port Moresby? Oh, sorry, yes. Okay. 1071. Fatigue's down to 24. We have a disruption. Uh, we need 1,051 supply. We could potentially attack that tomorrow. We could probably have that by tomorrow, really. I could potentially have... Um... Yes, I've been meaning to actually get some transportation aircraft out here. We could probably go ahead and order an attack, really. Airfield damage, port damage is being listed at 100. It was intriguing to see, actually, that... Uh, it looks like his submarines are moving this way, actually. 
If you notice that we have a carry 48 over here, they're really quite astute at the ASW, and they're not detecting anything over here. So it looks like they might be in this area, which is intriguing. So you might be heading down here. And to be honest, if he's suddenly moving all of his submarines down into an area, that does indicate. I mean, we've noticed with THC, but he does tend to, which in fairness is what we did as well. We tend to move our submarines to an area before we were actually due to start operations, to be honest. So my, uh, that may indicate when he's actually looking to start operations down in the Coral Sea, uh, down in New Caledonia. Which should be intriguing. So let's take a look over here for any fans. So we're nearly at level 4 airfield, which is superb. I do need to get more supply delivered to this area in general. Like, this area has been quite hungry for supply, but, well, it's working out. As bizarre as things have been, with all the upsets and all the, uh, <laughs> all the luck as well, at least we have what we have, so, like, I can't, I can't look back and give talks in the face. We have what we have here, we can make use of it. I mean, ideally we can put him into a position here where he is going to feel tempted to come back to the Dutch East Indies. But then again, we'll have the, uh, Minikipadai over here, which will ensure the capture of the area. It will ensure the capture. Right, we'll take a look at our forces of Hidaka again. Uh, so that fatigue's down somewhat. Obviously, we're going to allow that to continue to drop there. Uh, we're 347 assault value. We'll allow it to drop. Allow that disruption of fatigue to drop, and then we'll attack. Okay. So I did go ahead and actually move additional units over here to Manila. Now, Manila's not complaining as much about uh, a garrison. I do have more forces actually moving into Manila now, which is good news. Uh, there should be other forces over here. We should have... Um, yes, let's see. How fast will Sumatra and Java fall? Well, Sumatra will fall quite quickly due to the fact that we actually do have quite a decent number of units over here. We also know how to make use of the roads over here in Sumatra due to the experience of the Deadman campaign. Java, I think Java will fall quite quickly, really. I think it'd be somewhat difficult because Batavia is going to be fortified. I'd imagine Sonobaya is going to be fortified. I think really what we're going to do then is choose our targets. I don't think he's going to be moving out to attack us. I doubt he would do that. But we'll see. I mean, as far as it goes with Batavia, it's going to be a case of we have to deal with it. I think really what we might have to do is... Uh, it's said that we can't take everything immediately. We might... We'll probably be able to take on Sonobaya. At the end of the day, Sorabaya is only clear terrain, uh, so it's always going to fall easier than anything else. So if we take a look over here, then, so Sorabaya is clear terrain. Java seems more annoying, so it's, uh, main two ports are very annoying. Well, that's it, isn't it? I think Sorabaya we can definitely take, and it might be Sorabaya that we actually do push towards, due to the fact this is all clear terrain over here. What we need to do when we do invade uh, Java is it doesn't really matter about Batavia or Sorabaya. What matters is we need to secure places like this, where there's mountains, uh, where we have jungle rough over here, where we have like the rough terrain, the jungle rough terrain over here, mountains, etc. That's what we really need to secure first. If we can secure those, and obviously the port there as well, and essentially force him to have to fight either a Batavia or a Sorabaya, or even in clear terrain hexes, then that's going to be good there. I mean, we do have a division that we can commit to the area. Those forces have since arrived over here, which is good to see. So we do have the 4th Division, which is actually recuperating at this moment in time, which is nice. So they're currently planning for Semarang, which, fair enough, I probably should have had them preparing for, like, Batavia or, uh, Sarvaya, but hey, we need to land there. So we'll have, uh, so it's 579 assault by here at this moment in time. Now, this isn't going to be enough. The Division is a good start. Frankly, we would prefer to have another Division, or two more Divisions, or even three more Divisions, really. Uh, we will have divisions after the fall of Singapore. It may very well be that we take the divisions from Singapore uh, to Java just to expedite the fall of Java. But we do need to start operations against Burma in some capacity. But I think it very much might be looking towards actually um, securing bases such as Sabang, Medan, bases like that. And essentially trying to turn the Andaman Sea into our own private lake, essentially. We will be um, having to deal with the Royal Navy out here, of course, but... If he does have the Royal Navy carriers with the American carriers, that does make it easier for us. It's like, frankly, I'd rather fight a Allied Navy in the Coral Sea than over here real in the Bay of Bengal. I'd rather do that. This over here is one of those situations where we might actually be able to fight him almost on our own terms, really. He does have air power, then. So we can see that there's actually air power over here at Suga, which is not too surprising. And so he could actually have B-17 support, which we've seen before. He likely still has these B-17s over there. And we have seen B-17s actually fly from Australia. So he does have B-17 support, which is something that we can't actually take uh, lightly. But he's not going to have uh, all the bases over here. 
He's not going to have all the bases over here in Burma that can actually support him. So that's something to bear in mind. Now, I do need to resolve the situation of Port Blair. He's not attacking me right now, which is okay. I do have the amount of Oscars to uh, be able to move supply in there. So we'll be able to get supply in there via transport if we wish to do so. And we could probably sweep that and take control of it, really. Uh, what we do want to do then is essentially force the capture. And at least that would give us something there. But it's moved a unit over there, so we can actually try to destroy that unit. That would be nice. Uh, taking Rangoon is going to be an interesting one. But I think really the best option is going to be to move around Rangoon. Isolate Rangoon and then go for Rangoon. But essentially take control of these bases in the interior and then deal with Rangoon. I think immediately marching on Rangoon would be a mistake. We should have more pirates. We probably we do have pirates around the area, and I couldn't I can't move the pirates around. We just need to get them moved around really. Just need to actually choose their targets. So we do have tankers moving to develop happen. Okay. Now if I take a look over here then. Uh we do have Okay, so there's a mixed bag of forces over here, but mostly engineers. We do have a naval guard units over here, which I'm gonna actually assemble. Make use of Kandarai. Uh, we do have Yokosuka uh, first SNF. We have two paratrooper regiments over here, which is useful. Okay. So we do have two paratrooper units that could actually aid us in Java, but I'll probably have them sent elsewhere, actually. How you doing there, Mike? Good to have you, my friend. Can you shoot down the port of Rangoon? Uh, it's going to be difficult in this game due to the fact that he has so many fighters, but then again, this is a situation where that actually works to our advantage in a way. Because it means that we can actually fight him there. Uh, we have thrown away the rural guard in altitude, which is fine by me. It does mean that it can probably cause us some problems there. I think he has a tendency to have a few aircraft up high and then have a uh, couple aircraft down low. Which, fair enough, that is what it is. But the thing is, what we need to do there is we need to shoot down as many as we can. Uh, and I think we would be able to manage that. He'll probably shoot down our own zeros, which, yeah, it sucks. But we can replace them in time. But he can't replace his airframes as such. He doesn't have a huge pool. The longer that we wait, the uh, the greater the danger there, because obviously he can actually get additional aircraft into his uh, pools there. I'd rather have the battle over Rangoon than him run away, really. Yeah, now we just need the uh, Key 94 to that'd be very nice. Yeah, I mean, that'd be the idea of a trap his forces. I mean, what I'd love to do is actually bombard forces at Pagoo. If we take a look over here then, so we have been finally reinforced, we actually do have additional AB here, so it's a 357, so the 448 looks to have just arrived actually, which is not a significant increase in power, but it's still quite nice to have. Uh, what we need to do then is get the Thai forces over here. Sounds okay for us in 4 to do. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, the R&D is not too bad. I mean, in fairness, I didn't know what I was doing. Somebody was very kind to help me, so I can never say that was a bad thing. But we will have new aircraft in the near future. I destroyed ground units, are coming back as shells. Well, destroyed ground units can be reconstituted. It's not so much uh, manpower that's a problem for us as Japan. Uh, let's see, R&D. Okay. So the A5M3, sorry, A6M3 there, is nearly there. That's actually doing fairly well. That is doing well as well. That's doing very well, in fact. So we'll be able to start switching some of these over soon enough, actually, which is going to be quite good. Right, A7M2. Sam, uh... Okay. We're making progress here and there. Key 44s. That'll be nice enough. Okay. I'm looking forward to having the 45 Nick. Okay. Uh, Judy 304. One second. Uh, D4, Y1, Judy. I, I can't recall, actually. <laughs> we'll obviously have to look into that one. Okay. I mean, in fairness, I do have the paid for expansion of the A System 2 uh, plant Venom Abashi. It may be potentially worthwhile to expand that plant. Obviously, I'd rather have had that. Supply, but we over expanded by mistake. But that's fine, that's fine. Uh, we're going to get up to about a hundred. We're actually, we're not far off five a day now, which is not too bad. We might potentially consider upping that a little bit more, to be honest, but we'll see about that. 
Okay. And the good news is we do have the actual MKB over this way. So we can get a very large surge of fighters and bombers, of course, in the area. A D4Y3 or D4Y4. The 3 has a 500 kilogram, D4 has an 800 kilogram, uh, the 3 is better at firebone. Where can you find the map I use? If you go ahead and check on my Discord, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and show you right now, and then you'll be able to see. So just give me a Uno Memento. Okay. Uh, so if you head over to my Discord here, which is Voices of the Ostrant, which I, say, I, I still think it sounds cool. Uh, we're going to even essentially make an invitation link here, but no. There we go, post that into the chat. There you go. So if you go ahead and join the Discord, and you go down to War in the Pacific, and if you go to the pins over here, I oh, thank you very much there, American. <laughs> that was awesome to read through. I only got to read like a page or two, but I didn't. I, uh, hopefully when I get more time. Uh, so here we go. If you head down to this post over here, you can see that we do have all the actual mobs. Uh, this was assembled by Marshal Tito. Lovely guy of ideas. But yes, there's all the links over here. And there's actually some interesting stuff as well. Little tips and bits. Very useful. But there's all the links there, essentially. Po uh, pinned it a few times here and there. There we go. Yeah, I'll have to read more of that. It did look really, really fun. No, that's awesome. You should be able to find it. There we go. Game's back on. Yeah, so if we take a look over here, Ben, we do have 112 zeros over here. 118 in total. How you doing there, Gary? <laughs> you have tits on the outside. <laughs> I wish. There we go. And so we're going to have to kind of use the MKB as firefighters. <laughs> yeah, Tito Atrosky. <laughs> Indeed. Okay. So like as we said there, due to the fact that we do have the airfield damage at St. Paul, that's good news. It's good to see that we finally do have that. He's likely going to have, I think he had like level 2 uh, fortifications last time, so he's likely going to have level 3 fortifications now. Uh, but what we're going to do then is, like I said earlier, give it another 2, maybe a day, likely 2 days, Get that disruption down, get that fatigue down, sorry. And then we can actually launch the attack there. I mean, we're up to 2437 assault value. We should be able to see that increase a little bit. It should actually allow some of these engineer units maybe to recover in that time a little bit more. Each engineer would make a difference. I do have forces moving over here to Kuala Lumpur to actually um, fill out the council requirement. Okay. I mean, the good news is when we do finally take Singapore, we can have things move quite quickly. And what we'd likely do then is either move them directly from Singapore, uh, but I am going to have to get the DMSs in advance actually clear the mines at Singapore, in fact. Uh, but another way that we could actually move things is um, we do have rail lines, I believe, from Singapore. So we could have them potentially move all the way to Taiping and then have them march across into Georgetown and have them immediately picked up from Georgetown and able to be moved there. Uh, we do have the MKB. It may very well be that we should do bring the battleships of Downs towards the Andaman Sea. I think Bombard and Pagu would probably be the way in there. I think what we're going to have to do is essentially try to deal with Rangoon via the air power. Uh, cordon him off, really. I think surround Rangoon, keep his forces there, and then capture the interior of Burma. Which would obviously take some time, but I think that could be done. It would be easier to take the interior of Burma, especially, especially, especially if he's actually focused on Rangoon. So I think what we're going to have to do then is begin the air campaign of uh, Rangoon uh, shortly. We'll build up the numbers of zeros, let them repair, and then start sweeping the actual squadrons. I mean, we will be outnumbered if we send them one squadron at a time, but that means that we can only lose so many zeros, and if the zeros actually do perform well, as they should do, if we give them the proper pilots, and obviously fly at good altitudes, then we should be able to whittle him down. If we have fighters and the bombers, having bomber sweeps over Rangoon would keep him honest and keep him fighting. But frankly, what I could potentially do is, rather than using bombs against the airfielders, I could potentially target shipping in said area and force him to have to keep his assets out there. And potentially striking the shipping could be a way to sort of get around his cap, or make him have to fly further out. Because if we target just Rangoon itself, he's only going to have to fly... Uh, he's only going to have to fly zero range. Uh, but if we can force him to maybe use, like, LR cap, or maybe have to fly cap at a greater range, we might be able to boost his fatigue for... I mean, it's going to be difficult to try and beat him in a fatigue sort of race like that, but hey, well, there we go. Okay. Uh, having numbers in a fight seems to get better results. Yeah, it does, really. It does see. <laughs> it does very much. <laughs> uh, we will be able to get better results. I mean, what we could probably do is have the MKB uh, possibly positioned in the Gulf of Siam, somewhere like that, and then have them fly their sweeps over Rangoon as well. 
we're gonna have to do things like that. We're gonna have to do things that I wouldn't normally consider doing. But essentially, like I said, we're gonna have to treat the MKB as almost like a firefighter. The intriguing question is going to be, where are his carriers? But I do think his carriers are likely in this area down here below Australia, heading towards this area. Uh, what we're going to have to do then is take a serious look at this area, take a serious look at how we can actually fight for it, and how we can actually make him pay for it. We do have a number of airfields that actually do have aviation support. They might not be the largest airfields, but they're still airfields that we can make use of, which is very important there to take into consideration. Might not be perfect, but it's still good enough. What I need to do is actually get engineers moved around, get things shifted around somewhat. I mean, we do have the full fair division there. Uh, the issue is the full fair division doesn't have the range for new mayor, and never will do. Uh, below AX for your reference off screen, I posted to the comparison of Judy 3 and 4. Oh, thank you very much for your comment there, that's much appreciated, my friend. Yeah, I'll have to take a look at that. Okay. So over here at Lay. Yes, we're almost at level 4 in airfield, which is very good news. And uh, what we can then do, we actually do have a great deal of supply over here, which is excellent. Okay. So we do have an amphibious force over here then. What I'm going to do then is actually move engineers over there. At this moment in time, uh, with Gazmata, I am building up the airfield. It may not be worthwhile to take the engineers from here, but then again, we do need to build Rabal up. I'm going to aim for a size 7 airfield, uh, likely. Rabal is going to be one of the largest spaces that we do have. Uh, we do have two siblings over here, actually. We do need fuel. We should have fuel on its way, actually. We do have tankers over there. Right. Okay. So we've got 40,000 years of fuel. This is why I feel very, um... <laughs> I'm very much aware of our fuel issues. Okay, so we have... 7,950 there. I do have 27 units of fuel there. There's another 44 there. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is actually have that fuel move to Rabal. But we will need more fuel in this area. Actually, how much did we capture the Rabal, uh, Palambang? Uh, not very much. He's obviously moved that out. Not too shocking, but that's okay. It's okay. It would have been nice to capture a large stock, but hey, we can't do much about that. Okay. We should ideally capture some fuel over here to Singapore, so at least keep us going. Okay. You work with what you got. And you don't know what you've got until you lose it. Right. So we'll dock here. I'm going to have this element of the base force picked up. And then it's going to be transferred down to Manila. Okay. So I'll have it transferred to Eba. Eba being a size 2 port is quite handy to make use of that. They can then retire. And though in fairness, what I'm going to do is actually have them sent to Saigon. We do need to have supply move out from Saigon down to Palembang. Uh, so we can actually go ahead and begin to repair there. And the issue is we do have resources in the area. But it's a little bit... Uh, it's more distributed than we would like it to be, really. Uh, but that's okay. We can make use of that. Mm. Okay. Right. So we do have the naval guard units over here, so they've been loaded. Uh, we do have the actual detachments as well as the uh, additional aviation units. So we do have a good number of men that can actually move out there to actually act again like firefighters, which is going to be handy. I would like to make a push for the Illusion Islands. Which we should be able to manage there. Hmm. I don't think I need a level 3 airfield here. Uh, fortifications might be something to take into consideration. It might be potentially worth uh, building up a port better Paramashiro Jima. And the issue, though, is I don't want to turn Paramashiro Jima into a very, very attractive uh, American base, essentially. Because if we turn Paramashiro into a decent base, I mean, he could build up if he wanted it to. He could do that. It's only going to be a size 2 port. It's kind of out there. But I don't want to give him potential bases to take. But then again, this is it. Um, a level 2 base doesn't make that much of a difference versus a level 1 base. He's still likely going to choose a... He's probably going to go for like a historical path to victory. We'll see. In fairness, I see his push is actually coming from the uh, Central Pacific more than anything. Right, let's see. Do we see anything on the map here? Can you rewind on Twitch to the start of the stream? Uh, 
I don't think so until it's done, but once it's done you can watch it from the start, or obviously then I can upload it to uh, YouTube. Okay. What am I looking for now? So we'll take a look at the operations poll. Right. Oh, okay. That's pretty good to know about Pamantia. We can definitely see those running cap there of the rank boom, but I don't think that was like a great mystery. So we do have supplies, we do have MC21 salaries over here, moving forces, or moving supplies of balance path, which is not exactly ideal. Uh, okay. Yeah, we finally, we finally took balance bank, long last. And it came out okay. We had a decent amount of damage there, not too bad. Okay, these will be filled out soon enough. Devices upgraded to 21st Special Base Force. Okay, man. It's not just like the desired. Uh, we do have these forces in Harbin. Uh, Yohabaru. Yohabaru. It's like Kyoto. Brian. Hmm. Okay, Suva. We've seen that already. I'm not seeing heavy radio transmissions, however. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take a look at China then. Uh, so we did get to actually destroy that core there, which was nice. But the best part is it retreated rather than actually being destroyed, which is good. Um, okay, so he's actually reinforced over here in this position. Okay. Not particularly. I'll go ahead and take a look at them shortly, actually. So I've seen about 18 units over here, which is definitely overkill. But it shows you just how much he's actually afraid here. Yeah, I mean, THD does seem to have the tendency to, like, over, over commit to things sometimes. Like, there's no real need for that. You don't really need 18 units. It's like, after, after a certain point, it's just, it's just like, well, how much do you really need there? Does it need to be there, or could it be elsewhere? But that's fine, I'll make do with that. We always wanted to think that we're going to come down, the, like, <laughs> through the front door. Because the thing is, we might one day do that. But we do, uh... We're looking really more so elsewhere. So we do have forces over here that are moving strategically. So they're going to be moving up towards this northern region over here. And we'll then get them moving out through this road over here. I and mean, what we'll look towards doing then, is if we take a look at the roads here as they come up. So we do have the roads over here. A map that we've reached this point of then cross over here. He does have eight units there. But what I could potentially do is I could potentially uh, capture Yunnan. Maybe via paratroopers, and then begin flying units out over there to Yunnan, uh, possibly. At least in a position to take Yunnan would maybe force him back across the river. Uh, not that it makes much of a difference, but if we take a look over here. So we've got rough terrain. To be fair, rough terrain is not that bad. That's not that bad. It depends on what those units are, but if they're small units, we would be able to defeat that. The wooded rough isn't uh, exactly ideal, uh, but we could potentially force him back from that. If we amass a couple of divisions or a decent amount of force, we could potentially do quite a lot of things. Uh, but we do have the uh, armoured units. They're going to be terrible in fighting that terrain, but what we do gain from them is their speed. So if they're able to move along these roads quickly enough, that'd be quite nice. Try and, uh, try and outdo him in speed could be quite useful for us. If he was wise, he'd have a unit along each of these hexes, essentially, to make it difficult for us. But we'll see. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take a look at the air and uh, ship losses. So today we had four of these lost. I can't even recall what I don't even know which ones they are. They were lost obviously in Palembang on his capture. Uh, we did have Adina shut down. We had uh, Oscar lost. Uh, GM. G4M1 there goes down to Ops. The G3 goes down to Ops. He loses a B17E and a B17D to Ops losses there. And that's not nice for him. He doesn't get particularly many moves. So we had four Japanese losses and eight Allied losses here today, which is not too bad. He had a Warhawk loss, a Winaway loss there. All of these were pretty much... The only thing that was actually shot down today was Adina. Everything else was lost to the uh, Ops losses there. Uh, yes, yeah, so we had to look at it. I'll go ahead and take a look at it once again for your benefit there, Gary. Uh, so we did manage to capture it there. No. Uh, with a 189 damaged for the oil there and 214 for the refineries. Uh, it could have been better, but it could have been far worse. So that's quite good. I've got oil repair set on now, but I... <sighs> Don't think I have enough supply for that. I need to get more supply into Palembang potentially beforehand. 
Yeah, not bad. Could have been worse. Quite happy, but it came as it did, really. We do see that there's actually a Dutch unit over here, but we should be able to take control of Sumatra fairly quickly. Uh, as I said to the uh, stream earlier on, we have learned the lessons regarding the hats, and we know how to get to Penkelin without any problems, so we'll have no delays of that nature, which will be quite good. I think what we're going to be looking towards doing then is uh, we do have the key 43s over here which can move in there. Which is good. We do have quite a few key 43s there. But what I'm going to be considering doing then is moving the aces and two zeros from Kandalai, move them out towards this area so we can actually make use of them over Batavia. Essentially what we want to do now is uh, solidify control over the skies of Java, open up the way for the invasion. We're going to have the reconnaissance continue to run and try and just, just really scan through Java. Oh, it's a float plane. Well, that's that's not bad then. Just trying anything's worthwhile. Okay. So we do have these forces over here. What is there actually here? Okay, so we do have 16th Army, which is useful in and of itself. We do have our Afghan Battalion, Independent Mortars. We do have these units over here, but we have Yokosuka, SLF, and the Ranger Regiments. Uh, what I'm going to do then is actually have all these elements loaded up. I'm going to go ahead and grab the AA as well. Turn troop load on only. Oh, to an engine one, that's actually quite intriguing. Right. As we're going to have these assets transferred to Megazar. Megazar. Or oh, likely, to be honest, I could... I'd likely be better off moving them towards Benapapan, perhaps. Or even Benjamin Marston. Uh, what we need to do is we need to assemble our forces, really. I might just go to Megazar. I'll just go there for the time being. We're going to move them anyway. And I don't want to be taking too much risk with submarines. Uh, but we do have the MKB there closing in, which is good. Yeah, okay. Let's take a look then at ship arrivals. Okay. So we'll have them, y'all. Y'all. She'll be arriving in a few days. New submarines there. How are we actually doing on naval shipyard points? Okay, so we're at 38 this turn. Uh, beforehand, we were just basically at zero. That's good then. Okay. Uh, so we do have our assets over here then. Right, so we do have the AKs. That's what I was thinking of then. Okay. You could do with being repaired there. There's a lot of ships in here. There's a lot of ships in here. And what we're going to do, Vince, we have 58,000 tons of supply here. Uh, disband that force for the time being, then. Uh, we're going to disband this guy here. Yeah, but you need to go for repairs. Okay. We do have a couple of coins over here that we've moved as well, actually. Right, supply. So, 6 7 there. Okay. We do have our unit moving over here to the south. Okay. 35th has finally arrived, so 35th is moving out there. I could potentially consider an attack over here then. It is wooded rough terrain, but it would be worthwhile to secure that. The only difficulty is that it's wooded rough terrain after. But if we can secure this against two, I'd rather do that. We could probably... I don't think we'd win. I think it'd probably take a couple of attacks, and it's one of those of is it worthwhile. But if we allow it to move more Chinese units over here, that's going to cause us problems. But then again, we could potentially move forces to then make him move around. Um, it's probably a case of having to go for it really now. There are additional divisions on the way too. So we'll see about that. Hmm. Yeah, we'll think over that one. It probably is a better idea to actually attack now. We do have additional divisions on the way. Uh, but we need to start to dig him out there, really. The good news is he can't build fortifications as such, but he can build... Uh, the units themselves can actually build their own fortifications. Uh, the cores do, of course, have engineers, so they can definitely do that. So I think we probably do need to start to degrade the uh, fortifications he has there. That would be a wise idea. Okay.
I'm a problem. Yeah, I don't get that comment. I, I found it really rather annoying. I, I, I don't mind people getting like passionate about something. But that was damned. It's like I didn't know. Uh, never mind. What does the unit of Shushi end? Shushi end. Shushi end. Shushi end. Okay, we're just going to go to the bases. <laughs> so we can't remember where that is. Okay. Ah, right, I see. Ah, there we go. That is the enemy forces that we ejected from Winkal. There we go. So we are moving to surround burn. Okay. Right. I could do some other units over here, really. He hasn't taken the base right now. Well, we didn't give him the base, I actually gave units for him. Oh, well, it is what it is. He'll not have the supply anyway. And that's the difficulty, obviously, because he retreated over here. He had a head start there. He was here for a time, we're moving there to secure that. Oh, well. Oh, well, Gary. Oh, well, Gary. Oh, well. There we go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I do find it annoying when units do retreat that they do gain multiple miles, like, well, potentially, like, multiple turns worth of movement. It's quite annoying that they can actually do that. But then again, I can see why. It's kind of gaming, though, isn't it? You think, well, they've just gained, like, a, uh, a couple turns of movement there. I can understand why. So obviously, it's meant to represent the flight there, isn't it? Which is why they leave their guns behind it, etc. Yeah, well. So we are a little bit shy of supply here. We're only about 40 or so supply. I mean, we could have, could potentially take a look at the previous turn and see how much supply was there beforehand. Um, hmm. Yeah, you're right there, Palmentier. Okay. Hmm. I think we can wait another day before we attack. I'd rather actually have the required amount of supply. We'll have it tomorrow anyway. As to whether or not Pod Mosby would fall then. I don't think we're far off. He's still got some strength there, but I'd like to see if he's actually going to run out of supply, or potentially be close to run out of supply then. Uh, we did see quite a few supply hits. I don't know how effective the said attacks on the supply have been. And we had the battleship bombardment, we had the heavy cruiser bombardment. Uh, it does make me wonder. It does make me wonder. Yeah, they've just arrived back this turn, so we'll have them sent out again. It did actually look as if his submarines, uh, the submarines had moved out there, so that was good to see. I think what we need to do then is go ahead and move some aviation over here to Buna. I could actually then have uh, the key 48s actually based out here at Buna and actually properly run air submarine in this area, which should make things far easier for us. And I could actually have this built up a little bit, have more supply actually held here at Buna. We could potentially even bring in some transport to actually fly some of the supply across, but I don't think that'd be worth it. Okay. Gas Malta can build up in time. Uh, the 11th Fair Fleet. Okay, let's take a look at that. So that it has a range of 5. There's a lot of engineers here. Okay. So the Air Fleet can remain in that position at Gas Malta for the time being. I do wish Gas Malta was on the other side of the island. It would make it safer. 
I mean, that's something that we might have taken into consideration. Uh, it's jungle rough right now, but it's actually open to bombardment. But it's in a fair position. At the end of the day, if it's going for bombardment, then we kind of have failed in terms of air power. None but I have something to bear in mind. Right. So the only things that we see right now are the task forces over here, here, and here. Obviously these ones as well. Okay. Ah, oh, right, okay, so fuel has arrived over here at Rebel. I'm thinking, I, I'm sure I sent some fuel out here. I thought it was that one. Okay, so we do have 15,780 units of fuel unloaded in here, which is good news there. That's good news. Yes, it would be nice there before, I would agree there. If I could grab that base, I'd be really happy. I might be able to go ahead and do that, to be honest. I mean, what we could potentially do is actually have one of the destroyers, or even two destroyers, actually run a fast transport mission. And I think that would be potentially worthwhile. Do you mind, do you mind we could probably do that? I mean, we could probably do that and have a bombardment there. It would be nice. Hmm. It would force them to surrender. Ideally, anyway. I mean, if we could force them to surrender, that'd be fantastic news. Yeah. That's the thing we're looking to do there. But there we go. So if we take a look then at the actual bombard and heavy cruisers, they've been rearmed already, which is excellent news. So I can move in there. I'm going to get some forces moved over here to Buna. Uh, we won't have... I mean, I could potentially have the key 48s moved out there to Buna, but it's probably going to take a day. It'll probably take two two days at minimum to actually get the forces out there to Buna to be useful. Having some aviation support and actually having engineers there. Actually, no, you know, that's the question there. Never mind, I don't actually have an airfield yet. Uh, so I do need to get the engineers there. So I can get engineers moving. That's fine. We can run reconnaissance over to this turn. Yeah. Morsby's not going to repair anytime soon. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, we can actually get a good chunk of actual engineers in there. The good news is it does seem like we can actually project control out here, which is good. Uh, what we might actually want to look towards doing, then, is potentially uh, targeting bases along the northern Australian coast, perhaps. Uh, it depends. It does depend. I would like to take Horn Island in the near future, though. Having these bases up here would be nice. But if we took control of this base, it would stop him being able to... I, I think he would have to surrender at that point. He might try to move to this base over here, actually. So it might be worthwhile to try and take both of those. So if I take a look at Rabal, uh, we do have elements of the 82nd Naval Guard there. Oh, we do have the 7th Independent SLF Koi there. And that's fantastic. It's only got three... Oh, yeah, there we go. That's perfect there. It's got three squads, but if that base is empty, that is all we need there. So that would be good. Uh, so that's something that we can definitely think about doing then. Uh, we'll get that underway. I will want to actually secure these bases over here, really. Uh, yeah, there we go. I think we're going to call it about here. There's not a tremendous amount extra that we can talk about. But we do finally have the fall of Panda Bank, which is all uh, all too, <laughs> too late, but hey. We've got it now, we can actually make use of it. I think you just yeah, I think you can destroy all the supply in the base if you do something like a hundred port and airfield damage. Is it really? Wow. I mean that'd be kinda crazy. I mean we did have a hell of a powerful bombardment, didn't we, with the bombardment, uh, from the battleships. And the heavy cruisers there as well. I mean that was a really big bombardment. It didn't look terribly effective in regards to actual troop casualties, but who knows? We never see the full story, do we? Right. And so indeed, we'll go for that then. We are getting there. We're getting a little bit closer each and every time now, which is very nice. I think maybe another day, potentially two days uh, of rest at Singapore. Continue to build up the actual airfield damage there in Singapore as well, which would be quite nice. We'll build up the airfield a bit if we can do so. Yeah, but if you send BB and KB along with them. 
his EVs are located. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to have to bombard them again. I'm not going to have to bombard them again. I mean, Port Moresby's already at 100 and 100. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. So thank you for watching there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go ahead and say a big thank you to my patrons right now. It's been a nice time. We are getting closer to the end, which is excellent. Okay. So a big thank you to Ove Kato Borsch, Susanna and Daniel, Stanley Schlav, Fun4123, Allergent, uh, sorry, Allergent, Alex Diligent Gravy. <laughs> I can plan the names there. Mr. Paradigm Blue, Thunder, Eric Justo, Dingo Pat4, Mr. Baines, KO, Bleach Acid, Eric Wiles, Patch, Imperator Thrawn, Rick Chambers, James and Saint George Kugol, Isaac Chrome, Talawan to E, Deepak Duck, Raphael, Paul Sanders, Sun Yan, The Forgotten, Lord Luba, Ricky Blinson, and Gorek Japan Housen. I thank you very much there, you lovely, uh, lovely ladies and gentlemen, for supporting me. That really does make a difference. If you guys do feel like I've actually earned your support and actually feel that you can support me as a content creator, uh, please do consider becoming a patron or potentially subscribing here on Twitch is much appreciated. Especially if you have those juicy, juicy free Amazon uh, subscriptions. <laughs> those would be awesome. There we go. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Have an awesome evening. I will see you all in the next turn. Goodbye for now. See you in the future. Tenahaika Banzai. I guess I'm going to say. Goodbye for now.